It's Rob from the future here, and I just want to start by saying that while CockroachDB can help you to satisfy some of the legal requirements involved in data residency, you should always consult your own data privacy specialist before making any promises to your customers on the security of their data. I'd also recommend reaching out to our amazing team of sales engineers who can help you architect your CockroachDB clusters in a way that will serve you best from a regulatory perspective. Today, I'll be talking about locality, specifically what it means to be compliant with international and intranational data privacy regulations. I'll start at a high level and discuss the country to country data privacy regulations and how CockroachDB compares against the cloud service provider databases. And then I'll take a look at a specific country example and how the databases compare then. Fundamentally, any database, even a Microsoft Access database, could satisfy a global data privacy regulation. You'd just need a specific instance of that database that didn't talk to any other databases in any other countries. This would be quite a lot of management overhead because you'd need to make sure that each database in each country is deployed manually and updated in isolation. This can lead to config creep, whereby each of your databases is ever so slightly different in different ways or could even be running a different version of the database entirely. There are two things that would allow a single instance of a database to satisfy data privacy regulations. The ability to write to multiple nodes, not just have a single write or master node, and the ability to pin data to specific localities. Satisfying both of these would allow a single instance of a database to run globally while satisfying the global data protection regulations of each country it runs in. Let's go through the cloud service provider databases and see how they compare. First, we'll take a look at the country level. AWS Aurora doesn't provide multi-write nodes. It used to provide multi-write nodes for MySQL, but that seems to have been deprecated and it doesn't provide data residency. There's no way to partition data off to different localities. So wherever you are in the world, you will always be writing to that specific node. Azure Cosmos DB does provide multi-writes and it does provide data residency, although you would have to configure it at a database level with policies. It doesn't support row level data partitioning. GCP AlloyDB and GCP for Postgres both have one write node and don't provide geopartitioning. GCP Cloud Spanner does allow you to write to multiple nodes, but it doesn't provide the geopartitioning. And CockroachDB, as we know, provides multiple write nodes. Every node in the cluster is the same, and it does provide geopartitioning, so it does support data residency. Now we'll take a look at a specific country example. For this example, I'll look at the United States Federal Wire Act from 1961. It states that if you're gambling, the bet that you place and any data associated with it must reside in the state in which the bet was placed. So if we talk about cloud service provider regions, for example, there are no cloud service providers that have regions in each of the states around the United States. So we'd need to look at something like edge or fog computing to satisfy these requirements. In AWS, this is outposts. In Azure, this is stack. And in GCP, this is Anthos. Each allow you to run what you would run in the cloud on-prem. In order to satisfy the Federal Wire Act, three things would need to be satisfied. Multi-write, the ability to write to multiple nodes in the cluster. Data residency, the ability to geopartition data. And finally, the ability to run on edge, i.e. to run in specific states. In Aurora for MySQL's case, it doesn't provide multi-writes. Again, it used to, but that's since been deprecated. It doesn't provide data residency and it doesn't allow you to run on the edge. Therefore, the Federal Wire Act can't be satisfied by Aurora for MySQL. AWS Aurora for Postgres can also be ruled out for the Federal Wire Act as it has the same feature set as AWS Aurora for MySQL. Looking at the Federal Wire Act, Example specifically, you wouldn't be able to pin a bet to the state that you're based in because depending on where you are, it would be writing to a data center that's in a different state. Azure Cosmos DB looks more promising. It does support multiple writes and it does allow you to geopartition data using policies at the database level, but it doesn't run on edge. It doesn't allow you to run in Azure Stack. So therefore you could only run it in the Azure regions that Azure provides. And unless you had a region in every state, the Federal Wire Act isn't satisfied there. GCP's AlloyDB does allow you to run on premise. So if you did have hardware in each state, you could theoretically satisfy the Federal Wire Act, although you would be running separate databases in each of those states, all of which would need to be updated and talked to in isolation. GCP Postgres is much like AWS Aurora for Postgres. It doesn't allow you to write to multiple nodes. It doesn't provide data residency and it doesn't allow you to run on the edge. GCP Cloud Spanner does allow you to write to multiple nodes, but it doesn't provide data residency and it doesn't allow you to run outside of GCP data centers. And finally, CockroachDB, there's no surprise. It allows you to run in the cloud, on premise, on the edge, and it supports geopartitioning. So now I'll run an example of how the Federal Wire Act can be satisfied for a betting scenario with CockroachDB. 
First, I'll create a cluster. Now I don't have data centers running across the states, so I'm going to be simulating this using Cockroach Demo. I'll be creating an insecure cluster with no example database. I'm going to be running across 21 nodes that are going to be based around California, Colorado, Maine, New Jersey, Tennessee, Texas, and Washington. So this betting application is going to be based across those states and is going to pin data to those states. I'll start the cluster. Next, I'll create my database and I'll set the primary region to be California and I'll create the additional regions outside of California. I'm going to call the database Risk Noodle because it's a gambling thing, there's risk involved, and I asked ChatGPT for a good name. I'll use the database. Next, I'll enable super regions. This is the mechanism by which I will prevent data from leaving regions and I'll add the super regions. I'll add the California, Colorado, Maine, New Jersey, Tennessee, Texas, and Washington super regions. So data within those regions won't be able to leave those regions and replicate to other regions, which CockroachDB will want to do by default for resiliency. I'll create a member table. This will store data on my users. I'll create a type for bet status, pending the bet was won or lost or canceled. A bet category. This will describe the sporting event that the bet is being placed for. The bet type, whether you're betting that the team or horse, or whatever it is, is going to win, lose or draw. A bet subject, so the category that the bet is being placed in, horse racing for example, and then the name of the subject, i.e. the horse name. Next I'll create a table to store bets. Now it's time to insert some data. I'll insert some data into my member table. I'll insert some bet subjects and I'll insert some bets. Notice that each of these bets are being placed in a specific state and that's the state that I would expect the data to reside in. Let's now take a look at how the data is being separated. In California I have AZs A through C and they correspond to the replicas or nodes 1, 8 and 15. Colorado ABC corresponds to the replicas 2, 9 and 16 and so on. Each of the regions has three availability zones. And now I'll run a query to see how the data is being partitioned, where the data lives. And what we can see here is aside from the primary region, which houses other data that's not specific to this particular use case, Colorado only contains range ID 97, Maine contains only range 99, New Jersey 101, etc. They all have a specific range ID. If there were to be more ranges, they would be distributed across the cluster, but they would remain within the super region that they're supposed to remain within. There is no copy of 97 anywhere else in the cluster. Neither is there any copy of 99 anywhere else in the cluster. This data is specifically for main bets. I'll run another query now, which will check for violating replication ranges, places where data is being replicated where I don't want it to be. And there are zero rows, meaning zero violations. It's really easy in CockroachDB to pin data specifically where you need to. And one of our customers, Hard Rock Digital, that's exactly what they did for their betting scenario. They were able to pin data to specific states using CockroachDB running across AWS outposts to satisfy the Federal Wire Act. That's just one example. That's just the United States and the Federal Wire Act. There are different regulations for different countries, all of which need to be satisfied for you to run legally within those jurisdictions. In the case of the Federal Wire Act, if you want to run a betting shop in the United States, be aware that the cloud provider database that you're using might not make it legal for you to do that.